Welcome to the AP Physics Workbook Tutorial. Here we have Unit 5, Momentum. This section is 5.N, the center of mass for this motion. Here you could read the scenario to yourself, but basically there is an explosion to the in the center here. The 1 kilogram goes to the left, the 4 kilograms to the right. The first part A asks us to calculate the time in which uh, the 1 kilogram and the 4 kilogram hits the block. Here we have the kinematics equation in the horizontal. Notice that there is no horizontal acceleration. The position initial is zero. The velocity here is going to be negative 40 because it's going to the left. And the distance traveled is going to be negative 40 because the center is where x equals to zero. Plug that in. You could solve for t. You get t equals to one second. This is time it took the one kilogram block to hit the rough surface. Now, can, now we can do the four kilogram. Here you might wonder if you can use the same kinematics equation. The reason why you can't is because you do not know the final velocity of the 4 kilogram block. However, what you can do is use the conservation of momentum. The initial momentum of the 4 kilogram block is going to be the momentum of the 4 kilogram block after. You, s you plug it in. Isolate for V1, which is the final velocity in which the 4 kilogram block traveled. And you get 10. 10 is the velocity that the 4 kilogram block went to. It's positive because it went to the right. Now you could plug it into the kinematics equation. It's the same. And now you can solve. This problem just required you to use the conservation of momentum before. Let's go to the next part. It asks us both blocks have the same magnitude and the acceleration while sliding on rest. Uh, calculate the acceleration. So there is a rough surface, means there's a force of friction once it hits this rough patch here. And there, you can calculate the acceleration that the object experienced once it slides on it. Summation of F equals to MA. Force of friction is the only force here in the horizontal direction. Plug in mu N. The normal force is just MG. The mass cancels out. The acceleration is equal to mu times gravity, which is just going to be 5 meters per second squared. This is the acceleration that the object experienced once it hits the rough surface. Next part, say calculate the time in which the 1 kilogram block comes to a rest at which the, kim at which the 4 kilogram also comes to rest at the same time. This is the kinematics equation that we're going to use for the one kilogram block. This is just the linear equation. It comes to a complete rest. That means the V final is equal to zero. Plug in the values of the initial velocity as well as the acceleration that it experienced from part B. Once it hits the rough surface, you can solve for T. T is the eight seconds. This is the time it took to slide. But that wasn't the total time. The total time is the time it takes to reach the surface, then the time it took to slide on the surface. So it is a combination of the 8 seconds here and the 1 second here that it took to reach the rough surface. So the total here would be 9 seconds. Same thing for the 4 kilogram block. Let's do that now. We are going to use the same kinematics equation. And again, it comes to a complete stop. Plug in the values here. The only difference here is that the velocity is going to be different. It's a positive 10 because it went to the right and the acceleration is going to be the same, but it went, but here I made it negative. All right, solve for it. You should still get the time. Time always has to be positive here. All right, so two seconds is the time that it took to slide on the surface. But again, the total time is the time it takes to reach the surface plus the time it slid. So two seconds plus four seconds. Four seconds came from part A. So two plus four equals six seconds. Six seconds is the total time in which the four kilogram object flew, slid, then came to a stop. Let's look at the last one. It's an argumentative one. It's going to ask us about the center of mass for this object before and during the collision. Here I can say that the center of mass here is zero when there's no net external force acting on the system. From that time interval, the object experienced no net external force. The object is still at equilibrium. 
So that's why the center of mass is flat and zero for that time. At t equals to two, you will uh, the system experience a net force with the explosion. The center of mass is calculated using the distance traveled between the two masses. The one kilogram block went to the left, the four kilogram block went to the right. So the distance of them is increasing. The center of mass increases because the distance between the block increases when the explosion happens. Then the one kilogram block is gonna hit the wall. The four kilogram block is gonna um, keep going to the right. That's why it tops off at that value. Also, we're done, but I want to also now supply you with some notes with the center of mass. The center of mass here can be calculated using this. It's basically a summit. It's like an average. Okay. So for these two masses, mass one and mass two. Okay. Their center of mass can be calculated with the distance times that mass added together, divided by their total mass. All right. So notice that as the object moves apart, the X, one and the x2 are going to be um, increasing okay so it's also the fact that the top of the fraction increases because the distance increase the center of mass will also increase All right. so there you go those are a bit of center of mass notes to clarify the argumentation to give you a better understanding of why the center of mass increased